What's going on, y'all? It is your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of what's this? Life after lockup, y'all. This is season two, episode forty-four. Rules and receipts. Before we get into the review, as always, church announcements. Subscribe to my channel if you have not done so just yet. Before you leave, let me know that you stopped by. Give me a thumbs up or thumbs down and then hit the notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. I also want to give y'all a quick announcement on my brother. Y'all know he was in a wreck a week ago today. He is doing so much better. They have moved him to a regular room. He's eating. He's he's talking crap. Um, he's fussing. He he's cracking jokes. He is on the road to recovery. So thank y'all so much for all the prayers, all the love. We appreciate it. He appreciates it. He said that out of his own mouth because I told him that he's got love from my subbies out there, all of my nieces and nephews and brothers and sisters all over the map that's praying for him. His information will be in my description box down below. So go and flood his Instagram or his Facebook. Tell him that his little sister Nikki sent y'all over there, okay? But um, hopefully y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. I got me some old cheap Moscato tonight. Y'all see how cheap it is? Shit, look like piss. Got me goddamn tipsy already. Hopefully, y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So, let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. Look here. We, we got my nigga Clint. Clint is... <sighs> Clint stressed out. He trying to figure out a way to get goddess on up out the prison. He finna go have to meet with a, a, a goddamn attorney because he just he 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 got to get his goddess out. He's sick to his goddamn stomach. He don't know what to do. His mom and daddy done laughed his goddamn face. They don't want nothing to do with this bitch. So he gotta figure out what the hell to do. Attorney, like, look here. Uh, <laughs> your goddess has a couple of options, okay, and none of them look good for her. Now she's on a five thousand dollar bond. She is on a second degree felony drug possession. She looking at the minimum two years, maximum 20 years. That attorney's like, look here, uh, in the state of Texas, we don't play, you know, when it comes to them drugs. Act up and we will snatch that ass up, okay? He like, look here, I can't be out here waiting on 20 goddamn years, like, what 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 is I'm going to do without my goddess? Like, what what is my other options? The attorney's like, look here, when she get out, she basically going to be on probation again. She can't drink. She damn sure can't have no goddamn meth. She can't be out here on these streets uh, running fucking wild no goddamn where She got to be calm if she even can get her ass out of jail. Because right now, she in a goddamn shitty ass situation. So they like, look here, she don't have to go to rehab if she does get out, if she has a chance of staying out of jail. So Clint like, look here, he's sick of this shit. He need to tell God, he's going like, look here, goddess. I, I can't be having this shit in my life. My mama, my mama and my daddy already looking at me like I'm fucking crazy. Because loving you. So he, he gonna put an ultimatum on her ass if she does get out of jail. Next up, y'all, we got Angela and Tony. Y'all, <laughs> Angela at the table, drinking coffee, chain smoking them goddamn Benson and Hedges. Meanwhile, Tony getting up out the bed, fresh up out the shower, <laughs> feeling like a new goddamn man. He done slept, made his way back in the house, and that's just like Donna Faye said. He gonna make his way from the car to the couch to the bed. That's exactly what the hell happened. Now, Big Ange said she was she felt sorry for his ass seeing him sleeping in the car. For two weeks, she felt sorry for his ass, so she let his ass back in the house. But she ignoring his ass the whole goddamn time. He's sitting up there begging, babe, I love you. Ba hey, girl, hey. I love you. You look beautiful. You look nice. Babe, I love you. He's steady begging, and she's steady ignoring his ass. She like, Tony, I, I, I need to know. Are you gone in me? Or do you really look like, I got to know, Tony, what is it? He looking like a dumbass. No, I love you. I I, I really want to make this work. I really love you. Donna Faye tried to tell your ass, Big Ange. Why can't you see? This nigga is caught in your ass. So Big Ange going to tell him, look here, if we, if we going to make this work, we got a set of rules and regulations. I'm going to need you to follow, Tony. Otherwise, this just ain't going to work. She proceeds to write out some goddamn rules for this grown ass man. No prostitutes, no extra money, no hookers. She admits that she's been giving this nigga 
giving this nigga a damn allowance of a few hundred dollars a month. She straight up sugar momming this nigga, giving his ass money. So she telling him she finna cut his ass off the money. She can go through his phone anytime she want to at her leisure. Matter of fact, matter of fact, give me your phone right goddamn now. She tries to go on the phone. It's a goddamn passcode on it. She like, what's your go? He said, it's uh, it's it's uh, two, 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 two. She tried to put it in. That bitch don't work. He was like, oh, yeah, uh, it was two, two, but I changed it to three, 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 three. Yep, that's what it is. She tried to go in there again and shit don't work. She like, nigga, you lying already. <laughs> but she still forgives his ass. Make this nigga sign a contract and put it on the refrigerator like that's really gone. Keep his ass in line like he not going to fuck up from that. Now, he does admit that he has to do this because he ain't got no goddamn choice. So, he got to do what the hell Big Ann say. But he says his life is going to be boring if he does what she has as far as them rules go. He don't even want to do half them shits. Now, look here, Big Ange. <laughs> don't get cancer behind this nigga because he ain't fit to do right. I'm just trying to tell you. Y'all, so we got Cheryl and Josh. They end up going to dinner earlier. It was cute or whatever. They being all lovey-dovey. Anyway, later on, they back over at Mama Josh's house, right? Now, Mama Josh, she's steady asking Cheryl every time she get around her. Okay, so what is y'all's plans? What y'all finna be doing? Like, what's going on? What is y'all plans? That would get on my goddamn nerves. Because Cheryl is even like, every time this have to see me. She's steady asking me this. Like, we get it. You don't like her. She don't like you. You don't like her in the house. We get that. But God damn. Somehow or another, they get on the subject about the wedding, right? Now, Cheryl says that she wants to get married in an old insane asylum. It's supposed to be one of the most haunted places on earth. And this bitch want to get married there. Mom Josh like, bitch, what? Not me. I won't goddamn be there. That's not fit to happen with me, right? So, later on, the producers is outside, and they talking to Josh, right? Now, Josh is like, I done got sick and tired of worrying about if my mama and Cheryl gonna fight. If they gonna get into it or whatever. If them bitches gonna get into it, they gonna get into it. Ain't a goddamn thing I can do about it. No sooner did the fool say that, you hear they ask, because they still mic'd up. You hear Cheryl and Mama Josh in there in the house arguing. Mama Josh is apparently getting on Cheryl's son. Now, he's three years old. She's upset telling him that he needs to clean up something. Cheryl didn't like that. She's like, well, here, bitch, pump your brakes. I'm his mama. You got to say something. You come say it to me. He's three years old. He don't know nothing. Mama Josh get pissed off, smack the shit out of Cheryl. Cheryl get pissed off, come outside like, this bitch just hit me. I'm done. I'm ready to go. I can't goddamn take it. Josh like, well... <laughs> Whoop, that is. I could have told you the most finna get into it. She goes back in the house. Josh runs in the house after her. I don't know if the most finna get ready to go for round two or what the hell happened. But child, she smacked the shit out of her. We all seen that coming, though. I thought, actually, Cheryl was gonna end up smacking the shit out of Mama Josh first. But hey, somebody got their ass smacked. I, you seen that coming. Andrea and Lamar. Okay, so we got Andrea on the side of the bed. On her knees, she's talking to the Lord. No, she, let, me, let, me, let me not play with God like that. But she does look disheveled. She looks distressed. And she's on her knees. She's talking to the Lord. She's like, God, help me with this. What I'm about to have to tell my husband and my kids about how I bust down in the closet. But just guide me through this or whatever, right? So just then, Lamar comes in the room because Lamar like, baby, you seen my charge? Oh, what we praying about? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> she like, well, just everything. Just, just talk with me. So she tells him that she told her friends about the whole closet bust down thing, right? And so she feels ashamed and embarrassed. And he like, look here. Me being locked up 20-some years, you can't see me low in prison. And you made love to a low in prison. And then you told me I had a daughter on the way low was finna do some real dumb shit. But you said a low straight, you know what I'm saying? I was like, this nigga, he's so, he's so black. He just so, he just so black. Now, Andrea says she wants to tell the kids about Priscilla 
being, you know, the bust down closet baby. Now he wanted to keep it a secret, but like he said, she don't went to the whole goddamn sip and see and then sip and see and told all her friends all her goddamn business. So she like, well, the hell with it. Let me go ahead and tell my kids too. Well, really, she wants Lamar to tell the kids about Priscilla being a bust down closet baby. He like, well, you know what I'm saying? We could have kept that shit a secret, but you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You know, we can go ahead and do that or whatever, right? So all that talk about the bust down closet got Lamar feeling a little bit hot and bothered. You know, he ready to go in the closet, you know, they closet and bust down their own damn closet. She like, no, no, Lamar, we are not on that level. You can go back and you can go sleep on the couch. And he like, oh, that's some old bullshit. I was thinking the same thing, like, what? Now you want to, uh, I mean, okay, girl. Later on, they end up going to a soda shop. Utah, Utah seem boring as hell. Please don't nobody from Utah come for me because I ain't sent for you. I ain't saying you in particular. I'm saying the state in general. Where they at? It seems kind of boring. But they end up going to a soda shop or whatever. And um, she thinks that that is the perfect time to tell these kids about Priscilla being a bust down closet baby, right? So they sitting down and she like, okay, so we got something to tell y'all. That damn Nyla, I love Nyla. Nyla like, look here, why the hell is it? Anytime y'all got something to tell us, y'all that that's when y'all take us out. Y'all don't take us out any other goddamn time, but when the hell you got some goddamn new to tell? Ain't that, ain't that a bitch? Tennyson is like, yeah, you never take us anywhere for anything else, for anything else, unless you have something to tell us, so I don't understand what's going on. And she's like, no, we take y'all places all the time. They're like, no, we never go anywhere, but unless you have something to tell us. <laughs> Lamar say, I wanted to wait until I was out of prison, you know, but um, me and your mom wanted to let y'all know that um, we had Priscilla when I was in prison. The kids are sitting there like, the fuck you just say? He was like, yeah, we, um, we conceived Priscilla while I was in prison. That damn Nada looked like she wanted to throw up. Nada was like, Ugh. You said you did. What? That goddamn Andrew! Andrew gonna say, I know y'all think mama got pregnant by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Andrew, goddamn. <laughs> Tennyson was like, oh, bitch, no, we didn't. We already got <laughs> I had to stop my goddamn TV when that bitch said, I know y'all, I know y'all think I got pregnant by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Like, uh, no, ma'am. Uh, we never thought that. <laughs> now the whole thing is like, okay, so why didn't you feel like you could tell us this? Lamar tells him, well, I wasn't going to say nothing about it, but your mama went to the whole sip and see and then sipped and told all the whole damn business. So now everybody know. Now I'm like, wait a minute. So you don't went and told Michelle and Fifi and Cece and all these other nosy ass, judging ass, Mormon females about what's going on because you don't want to be judged, but you don't come and tell us your own damn kids. Like, what the hell, man? Nala is, n goddamn Andrea's kids are smarter than her. And that's sad. That's so sad. Even a baby girl, bust down closet baby was like, look here, mama, you ain't got a lot of your own kids. I'm happy to know that he my daddy because uh, I knew the Holy Spirit wasn't my daddy. <laughs> Like, you know what? I love my mama, but I can't trust my mama. She thinking that, you know what I'm saying? We gonna look at Lamar differently. Now I'm looking at you sideways. You done hear the whole relationship. You done hear the bust down closet, baby. Like, woman, who the hell are you? <laughs> Y'all, we got Lacey and Shane. Child, Lacey making sack lunches for all her kids. For her little boy, her little girl, her little husband. <laughs> It's his first day of work, y'all. He looks so cute. He got his backpack on, and she done made him a little sack lunch, and she done wrote Daddy Shane on his little sack lunch, put him a little sandwich in there, little, little chips, a little orange, a little something, something to wet his little throat, probably a little Capri Sun or something in there. Made all her kids a sack lunch. He's excited. It's his first day going to work ever, besides working on the yard over at the prison. The nigga ain't never had no damn job before, so he's excited to be going to work. He's excited because him and Lacey 
you know, they ever since John been locked up, shit been going bomb for them. Like, it's going to be Lacey and Shane all day. He tells her, you the best wife in the world. She like, oh, you the best husband in the world. The kids is, mm -hmm, we love Daddy Shane. The shit is beautiful. Meanwhile, you got John in a goddamn halfway house. <laughs> this nigga just so happened to luck up and get a good judge that ends up putting his ass in rehab aside, um, aside from putting his ass back in jail. So he's hoping that he can get clean and sober, get his life back on track. He's like, all I got to do is make eye contact with Lacey. <laughs> she ain't going to be able to resist a nigga like me. All I need to do is get up back in my corner. But boom, I'm back in there. You know what I'm saying? His plan is to get Lacey back. I'm like, oh, Shane. Oh, Shane. Later on, we got Shane in the old Home Depot with his homeboy, whatever. I don't know what they looking at. They try to end up looking for something. But Shane tells his homeboy that right before him and Lacey got married, he made a huge mistake. He wanted to get back at Lacey for her speaking to John. So he went out, got fucked up, and went and had a one-night stand on her with a chick. He don't know her name, don't know her from a can of goddamn paint, don't know the half of at all who the hell she is. Now, he wants to tell Lacey because he wants her to see that he's a good guy. Like, she can trust him. He made a mistake. And, you know, it just happened at one time. And that's it. He's a good dude. Meanwhile, homeboy, like, my nigga, um, you know you need her. I don't think that's going to be, I, I mean, I'm just saying if I was you, I wouldn't do that shit there. But that's just me, though. You know what I'm saying? But um, just know you need this bitch to stand on your own two feet, nigga, because you only been at work for one day. So... I think twice you might want to take that shit to your grave. I'm just saying. Yeah, we got Megan, Michael, and Sarah. Now, Mike is back in Flint, Michigan. He goes and meets his sister, Daddy, on the basketball court or whatever, right? Shout out R.I.P. Kobe because the, the basketball court was purple and, and gold. It's just, oh, Lord, R.I.P. Kobe and Gigi and all the other ones that oh, just hurt my heart. Anyways, he goes out there to meet his sister on the basketball court. They out there, you know, playing basketball or whatever. Side note, this nigga, Mike, got on a hoodie with his kids on it. The face on the back of him, you know, say Aviana and Raina on the front says no matter what. But nigga, no matter what, your ass ain't been there for your babies in the last couple of whatever. Your baby mama done said that. But that's just me prejudging him because... Shit, I'm petty like that sometimes. But, this nigga, you ain't been there for your babies no matter what, nigga. Fuck out of here. So, he tells Dad that he just got back from Fort Worth to going to see Megan. He went to holler at Megan and holler at Rock and see the whole situation that happened with that. Since then, he ain't talked to neither one of them because he pissed off at the both of them, right? He also tells her that he got this new chick named Maria that he's known before he knew Sarah. But they just so recently rekindled. And that's his new bitch now. Now, Day Day... You know, I, I really didn't like that at first. And, you know, quite honestly, I still, you know, you need to go on ahead and flirt with some girls your own age. Stay out your brother's shit because your brother is, your brother's, that nigga need prayer. That nigga need Jesus. You can't help him. His mom can't help him. He can't even help him if he don't want to help him. Because that's, I'm sorry, I hate to call that nigga deadbeat, but the nigga just do deadbeat-ish nigga shit. That's all I'm saying. She like, nigga, how many females do you need? She like, look here. Look, look, look at hair. You already know what it's like when we grew up without a daddy. I just don't want my nieces to have to grow up and not have their daddy there. He like, I'm going to always be there for my girls. What is you saying? What is you talking about? She know. She like, this nigga, I love my brother, but that nigga lie. He lie like a motherfucker. He tell us one thing. Got these half us out here thinking a totally different goddamn thing. Meanwhile, the, the kids and the mom is thinking a totally different goddamn thing. That's just what he do. He lie. And that's sad. When your own sister more man than you and want to step up and do more and want you to be more for your own damn kids than you. That's a goddamn shame. See y'all later on, we got Sarah going through her phone records, highlighting all of Mike's gigolo calls that he done made. He's, um, at the same time, Mike is, um, he's at his mama's house talking to his mama. Sarah ends up calling Mike and she immediately puts on her black voice, 
Like, what's up? Where you been? What you doing? Y'all know she get black whenever she talks to Mike. Any other time, she's a regular little white girl from Rochester, New York. <laughs> Soon as she get on the phone with Mike, she like, what's up? Where you been? I've been trying to get in contact with you. You ain't got contact with your girls. Like, what's going on? He like, what's up, Ma? What's good? Well, like, what you, what's, what's up? What you mean? She was like, well, yeah, anyways, I just want to let you know that I got that phone for you to contact your daughters, not for you to be contacting all these females. I done seen every call you made, every call that came in, every call that went out, every, 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 everything. I know everything that's going on. And so since you can't be there for your daughters, then I'm cutting that phone off. He like, why you want to do this right now? Like an old pitiful ass nigga. She gets pissed off because she like, look here, what did you come and see your daughters? You come to see your daughters or what? You know, she got real black with his ass. He was like, yeah, I'm, I'll be there soon. I'll be there. She gets pissed off and hangs up, right? He then says that she's jealous because she now sees that he don't want to be with her. So she worried about what he out here doing with these other females, which you know what? That's partially true. I, I honestly believe that's partially true. But at the same time, Mike, Mike, nigga, you ain't shit right about now. I'm not saying that you ain't got the potential to be shit, but right now, you just doing not, you just got real fuckboy tendencies about you. That's all I'm saying. Is you just got real fuckboy tendencies about you. Mike gets pissed off, goes outside, calls his new chick, Maria. And it's like, look here, I'm planning a trip to New York to go see my kids, and I want you to go with me. You heard me? She like, okay, baby. Child later on, he's in New York. He goes and picks up the new chick, Maria. All we see is her hand on his leg. They got her where you can't even see who the hell she is. We're going to see her on the next episode. But we do hear her say that all I know is that we're not here for her bullshit. I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, she with the shits. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm ready to see what's going on with this. Y'all in the episode ends from now. This nigga Mike ain't shit. I'm sorry. I'm, I didn't say it and I'll say it again. I'm not saying that he ain't got the potential to one day be shit. But right now, his fuckboy radar is going off. And it's like, boy. Mm, mm, mm. Look here. If it was anything that I missed, y'all already know. Drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And your Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's going on, y'all? Look here. If you like this video, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. Share this video. Comment on this video. All of that good stuff. And if ain't nobody else told you today, I sure enough love you and I sure enough appreciate you.